When I'm not trapped in literal vegan hell, I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube. So let's get to it. So what are your top 20 songs to learn? All right, so here's my definitive list of the top 20 songs to help you learn guitar, whether it's acoustic or electric, we got something for everybody here. We're gonna start off by doing a few ones that are like the classics that are probably on everybody's list, and then we'll go more to stuff that is just on my list because these are just songs that help me learn guitar, right? These are in no particular order, just songs that help me learn a lot. Little Wing, Jimi Hendrix, first one off the bat. A master class in really just learning double strokes. I'm gonna try not to play all these songs, but these songs are fun to play, so forgive me if I just go into it. But yeah, any Jimi Hendrix song can make this list. I'm going with Little Wing. Uh, I'm not alone in this one. I don't teach a lot of lessons on my YouTube channel that are song lessons. A lot of guitar lessons, but very few song lessons. Some of these I've actually done lessons on just because I think they're that important. So the ones that I have done, I'll link you to in the description. But yeah, I have done a little wing lesson because just seeing it really opened up the whole fretboard for me. Blackbird by the Beatles is really kind of like the ultimate one that you want to start off just kind of like finger picking because it's so, it's so structurally easy uh, when you first see it. A lot of these aren't super difficult songs, but again, no matter no matter where you are, skill level, they're all worthy ones to learn. Uh, I have to pick a Zeppelin song, huge Zeppelin fan. I'm actually gonna pick Stairway, even though it's kind of a meme at this point, but it's just such a journey of a song that if you learn the solo and the actual arrangement with the chords, it has a little bit of something for everything, and it will make you progress as a player super quickly. I'm picking Neon Knights by the Superior lineup of Black Sabbath, partly as a, a way to troll people for not picking Crazy Train <laughs> and having that, that be on the list, just because I think Neon Knights is such an awesome song and the riffs just keep coming. The solo is something that I think is kind of difficult, but also accessible in a way that you can really kind of like shed through, uh, shred through scales. There's gotta be a Rolling Stones song on here. I'm going with Wild Horses, specifically from a compositional standpoint, because this is the first song that really made me realize how much I love the flat seven major chord in a key. So what that means is like, it's in the key of G essentially, uh, but the chorus is, you know, A minor, C, C, D, G, F to C. So that flat seven major chord again, F isn't in the key of G, but F major is a great chord that goes with the key of G, something that I use in a lot of my own songwriting. Stand By Me, come on, like. A great song to learn like how bass. Walking bass lines go with chords. Also too, we play this one live, it always gets a huge reaction. I think Stand By Me is like one of the few songs that has a universal approval rating. If you hate on Stand By Me, you're just kind of a miserable human being. So that's that's a fact. Uh, Fire and Rain, James Taylor. Another great finger picking song, another great songwriter. Over the Hills and Far Away. Definitely like, just kind of like a pull off hammer on masterclass from Zeppelin. Zeppelin on here twice because they should be. Dead or Alive by Bon Jovi because it is a song that is both ironically and legitimately awesome. And every time the... Every time I hear that or play that, it just puts a smile on my face. So, Dead or Alive, Bon Jovi. So those are the hits that you'll see on a lot of them. Now these are songs that also are hits, a lot of them, but these are more, personally, I just remember making a big jump in my playing from learning these. Paranoid Android by Radiohead. If we want to consider this modern, it's still kind of old and relatively, you know? But uh, almost kind of like a modern stairway to heaven as far as like, it takes you on a journey. It's got, it's got a great riff. And it's got a, like a great acoustic arrangement. So Paranoid Android is something everybody should learn. Plug In Baby by Muse, one of my all time favorite bands. Uh, really shows you why you need to work on your scales, that riff specifically. Uh, 46 and 2. I had to pick a Tool song. I ended up going with 46 and 2 over Schism or Enema. Any of those could have been on the list, but just heavy, riffing, awesome songs. Everlong by the Foo Fighters, specifically the acoustic version, I remember was the first time I actually put my acoustic guitar on drop D and started chugging that out. So, awesome song to learn. Now this next song is probably number two for me as far as like how much I learned learning the song. And it's Waters of March by Joe Beam. Just a, 
It really, everything I know about Bossa Nova, I kind of learned from uh, Waters of March. Now, I taught this because early on in the channel, I did like a Bossa Nova week, where I was like, somebody requested me to teach uh, Waters of March because there were no good lessons on YouTube at the time. I don't know how it is now. So... I really set out on a journey <laughs> to try to teach this. And I'll link you to that for sure because, uh, again, under it, well, one of my best intro jokes ever is on the Waters of March lesson, so check that out. But uh, that, that song is such an amazing composition that you'll learn everything you need to know about chord theory just by learning that one song. Happiness by Elliot Smith. Such a, such a master class in just finger picking. Elliot Smith, one of my favorite guitar players, writers, artists of all time. Gotta check that one out. Under the Bridge by the Chili Peppers. As, as soon as you can play that riff, it, you start to feel like a real guitar player, I guess is kind of like my experience on that. A lot going on in that. Frusciani is just the man. Needs no introduction there. Death Cab for Cutie, title and registration. Not a super difficult song to play. Not a song that a lot of guitar players ever really talk about. But Death Cab, I think, is like actually kind of like a slept-on guitar band. And that one is just a lot of fun to play. It's something like... It's not something like that. I haven't played these songs in so long. But I remember when I was like learning that, it was just kind of cool as far as like having different root note changes over the same melody kind of thing and uh yeah just kind of like a learning about minor thirds intervals i think it's like a great riff song to learn oh the cantina song from star wars i that's john williams is just the man and that song is so much fun to play <laughs> i can't again some of these songs just will permanently put a smile on my face cantina song Fast, fantastic arrangement. <laughs> I don't even know. Great one. That's also in the description. Do I Want to Know by the Arctic Monkeys. Probably the easiest song to play on this entire list. Just a... But really kind of just shows the power of the riff and how it doesn't need to be hard it doesn't need to be complicated it's essentially the pentatonic scale but it's just awesome and it's kind of a modern classic so check that out and then number 20 condor avenue by elliot smith not even like a super well known but uh i just remember Teaching myself guitar in my dorm room, sophomore year of college. Again, I was a big Elliott Smith fan. That song, more than anything, really taught me how to learn songs. Because if you're an Elliott Smith junkie, you probably know about the website sweetadeline.net. They've got tablature and like multiple types of tablature. It's essentially like ultimate guitar, but just for Elliott Smith. And there's a lot of good tabs on there, a lot of bad tabs on there. I remember the Condor Avenue one was something that like I couldn't really even wrap my head around, nor could I get the tab to sound anything like the recorded version of the song. I think a lot of it might even be double tracked in the recorded album, I don't really know. But I do remember really making a very focused effort to learn that song and to kind of come up with a version of it using what I knew of guitar at the time and kind of using the tab as more of a reference instead of playing things note for note. And that's something that I cannot stress enough when you're learning a song in my opinion, again, depending on what your goals are, don't get too hung up on trying to play things note for note. Just try to play the song or your version of the song. And I think that'll make you a much better musician. I know that's like really the way that I learned how to play guitar was maybe starting to learn one thing and then taking it in a totally different direction. And then eventually you just kind of start using your favorite pieces of the songs that you know you like to listen to and then incorporating that into your own creative playing. And I do remember that just uh, the the juggernaut of Condor Avenue being probably the one song that I learned the most in as far as like, okay, well, this tab isn't really sounding like what I want it to sound like, so I'm going to use this just as, again, a loose reference in making my own version of it. So that's really cool. And those are my top 20. I also want to add a 21st song. If you've never heard it, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> And 
And guess who that song is by? That song is by me. I don't even feel shameless at all plugging that song because many times over the years, I'll be like maybe teaching a kid or somebody and they won't have anything that they bring to the table as far as like what they want to learn. And they'll be like, well, what are some songs? And then I'll go back to back. I'll always pick three. I'll pick probably two of the songs on that list and then I'll play. And nine times out of 10, they'll pick that song as the one that they want to learn. So far be it for me to put my own song in my top 20, 20 list, but I will have it as an honorable mention as 21st, which is also a lesson for that in the description. Super fun one to play. Why are you issuing a video to a global community if nobody can understand you? Your slang is awful. It might be okay for a native speaker, but not for others, fool. I'm very sorry that I did not filter all my slang through what the global community demands a non-native speaker understand. I don't even know what slang that I use in these videos, but uh, apparently I'm a fool. Sean's life is like a collection of those ridiculous ideas you come up with while laughing with friends, but quickly forget. Sean doesn't forget, he executes, nay, he rides. I really resonate with this comment on a very emotional level. Uh, yeah, that's 100% how my motivation in life works is those stupid conversations you have with your friends about what would be a good idea, I just end up devoting my entire life to doing. I did it, I think the first time I really put a lot of work into that was having a conversation with a friend about what eventually turned into the Jungle Journey animated <laughs> video that I posted years and years ago. That eventually turned into an entire animated album. It eventually turned into a Celtic album which drops December 6th, The Emerald Riders, and also it's probably going to end up being a lo-fi Christmas EP, which might even come out sooner than that. So that just kind of goes to show where my, where my motivation lies, and I appreciate some people for recognizing that and being on board. Can you also do one on cover songs for YouTube? The day before this video came out, I put a video out about how to get your covers cleared for Spotify through a service called DistroKid. It's just a dollar a month for them to take care of all like the licensing and stuff. YouTube is different. You can just put a cover song up on YouTube and you're fine. Now, what might happen, like if you do like an Eagles song, they're just gonna not let you have it. They'll just take it down, which is like super weird to me that the Eagles just don't want any cover songs of their music up because YouTube will automatically find the license for what you're doing and they'll automatically reroute any money made from that video. So you're not gonna make any money posting cover songs on YouTube as far as like the advertisers go. I promise you that you will make zero money, but you might build a following and then you can kind of like make money from that other ways, right? So find out what songs definitely are no-goes on YouTube. Again, such a small percentage of artists don't want their songs to be covered. I, just off the top of my head, I know that the Eagles are one of them and they'll just take them down, but there's no way that you can get in trouble. And again, YouTube will automatically handle that. There's an algorithm out there that apparently just finds cover songs somehow. But yeah, just do what you're doing. Post on YouTube. Hopefully people will uh, dig it and then just keep the vibe going. Sean, dig you and Justin's podcast. Thank you very much. If you don't know, uh, I've been doing a podcast with my buddy Justin. I also had my man Colin on there for the one that comes out today. It comes out every Wednesday and I will link you to that. So check it out in the description. Bro, I know that you have made a comparison about your Orangewood Sage guitar, but I'm thinking of buying it and haven't found much reviews and thought about it. So can you do a review? Yeah, so this is the Orangewood Sage. Yeah, I did a video of it comparing it to my Taylor, but I don't know if like having a review on just an acoustic guitar with no pickups is something that's very interesting as a standalone video other than just, just playing it. This has kind of become like my main guitar that I use acoustically for just like videos and stuff because I think it's fantastic. It's really inexpensive, 650 for like an all solid wood guitar. So if you're thinking about getting Orangewood Sage, I totally recommend it. Uh, stays in tune perfectly, sounds awesome. The best review is just playing it, and I play it in a lot of videos, so definitely check one out. So for listening homework, I'm gonna throw you to Waters of March, my favorite cover version of it, I suppose. I may have actually done this like three years ago in a previous QA, forgive me if I have, but uh, awesome song, great style, great just learning masterclass in songwriting and kind of like the bossa nova sound and feel. So check that out. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.